In this episode of the Back Engineering Show, we're going to discuss this spooky new attack that's called Spook.js, which allows an attacker to read content from another completely different page in you in the victim's browser. A little bit scary. Uh, the good thing is uh, there are very you know specific use cases and situations where this attack can. Uh, get executed and carried out right chrome protects against this and other browsers as well but there's this new few situations where you can get into this and you can get hit by this attack so let's discuss this welcome to the back engineering show with your host hussein nasser and before we discuss spoke.js spook.js uh, we really need to talk about a little bit of a history uh, specifically starting with uh, an attack back in 2018 called Spectre. Uh, I talked about it, uh, check out the video right here. But in a, in a nutshell, for the longest time, uh, if you want to build a browser, you, the listener, what do you would do, right? You would basically uh, run a process and uh, as 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 your client want to visit a certain website you will basically load that website in that process so what happened if the client want to execute another website a completely different website well we know the expense of starting a new process just to load that website so we usually use the same process innocently right because we didn't know any better to kind of load the same website in the same process. And there is nothing wrong with that, right? So you'd see one fat process, right? Large in memory, loading many, many websites that you're visiting. The problem with that uh, specific model is the memory, cookies, stuff like that, that sensitive data that is shared between Bank of America that you happen to visit and piratebay.org right are in the same process so that means the ram is one thing right the, the memory addressable location is in one place and technically this process can read both but right pirate bay or whatever an attacker website might be cannot really read bank of america just haphazardly right even though it's the same process why because worst case scenario you're executing javascript right javascript cannot just is not memory addressable you cannot just hey go read this memory address if it was we will be screwed a long time ago it's not like c right where you can say hey i want to read this address in my in my process you cannot unfortunately do that unfortunately you can you fortunately cannot do that right so so there wasn't any problem with javascript being hosting running in the same process right there was other you know uh it was it was frowned upon but it wasn't really a big deal right javascript is not really harmful in that regard right but spectre came in 2018 and uh changed that story uh, there was a bug uh in cpu believe it or not right in the cpu itself intel processors and and other processors uh, itself called a speculative execution where effectively uh, the cpu tries to be smart and too clever by half and effectively tries to predict what will happen next and based on that prediction it starts caching stuff in its memory that is not supposed to cache and with a little bit of a trick javascript tricks that I talked about in my Spectre video, you can effectively read this cached content, right? Using timing attacks. And as a result, you can read data that is in your process that doesn't technically belong to you, right? But you said, Jose, it's my process. Well, it is it is your process because I decided to put you as a as a website in that process. So so we're using a low isolation effectively, right? We're putting many many websites and many many content in the same process. Now, when I say it this way, it sounds scary because technically now it, it is very scary <laughs> these days. So Chrome and other browsers came up with the idea of isolation, site isolation. So it means if uh, if I visit 
piratebay.org and I visit bankofamerica.com, I'm going to spin up two processes. So that means they have their own memory location and they are completely isolated. So we know that even speculative execution cannot work because you will only read your stuff, which is, oh, you can feel free to read your own stuff. There is nothing in that except your stuff. PirateBay.org will only be able to read stuff that PirateBay.org has stored and nothing else. Well, yeah, uh, 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 the process itself have specific location and memory that even the process itself cannot read, like, you know, kernel specific stuff. That's where Meltdown, the other attack comes into a situation where you can read that. I'm not going to get into that. That's not even the topic. But that's, that's essentially the nutshell, right? So the process can read its only, only itself. But now, the question is, how do I determine what to isolate? Chrome, when they first built this idea of site isolation, they said, okay, if I visit bankofamerica.com and I visit piratebay.org, that is a completely two different domains, spin up a different process for them. But what if I visit blog.bankofamerica.com and then I visit uh, online.bankingofamerica.com and then I visit www.bankofamerica.com? It seems like it's an overkill to spin up three processes to blog, www, and online shopping, .bankofamerica.com, right? That's a lot of processing power because, um, hey, process spinning and forking processes is not cheap because you're going to have your own memory location and there is an overhead of spinning up just its own pro your own process. So that's why they're all the memes, for for chrome right all, all goes the memes when chrome is using a lot of ram why because it's trying to protect you and the memes just uh, became more and more prevalent really when when t specter came into the picture because now we trying trying to separate stuff uh, so chrome decided you know what uh, if, as long as we're in the same domain right the same top level domain we're not gonna we're gonna run you into the same process i mean yeah bankofamerica.com, www, and all that stuff, they, they are secure, right? They, they are on the same side, so it's okay to run it in the same process. It's highly unlikely that an attacker have control over www.bankofamerica.com or something.bankofamerica.com and doesn't have uh, control over something else, .bankofamerica.com. So the subdomain doesn't really matter. So as long as you own the top level domain, it's okay. We're going to run everything in one process. Some of you might think, mm, those guys from uh, University of Michigan and Georgia and a lot of other universities said, nope. They said literally, nope. Uh, you know, blogging website like Tumblr and a uh, site that uh, we devs use all the time, like Netlify. How do you spin up one? How, what what, beco what what becomes your domain? It will become blah 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 dot netify dot com, uh, Nasser dot netify dot com, whatever dot netify dot com, and these are completely different websites. Yet they share the same top level domain. Same thing with Tumblr. I don't know who uses Tumblr anymore, but you get my idea. Something dot tumblr dot com. So if you have, if you want to log in to tumblr dot com. And I made a nasty v attacker website. That's exactly what they did, those guys, called shady.tumblr.com. That's my blog that has my own nasty JavaScript and HTML in it that runs. And if the if I send you this link to shady.tumblr.com and you happen in another tab, to be logging in to tumblr.com, the auto population of Chrome will populate the password because, hey, you, I, I remember you, you logged in. But Chrome tries to be smart, says, oh, tumblr.com, shady.tumblr.com, they are the same top level domain. Let's put them in the same beautiful process. Let them share, let them be in the same location. Sure, why not? Let's save on the overhead. 
people are memeing us right that chrome is sucking all our ram and memory right you can also always download new ram you know just a click on a button go some website and click a button called download ram uh, and that will definitely work if you want to right you can always download a new ram and then it will it will increase the ram that so that's another topic for another day. don't do that guys i'm joking sheesh <laughs> okay. so the idea here is they put in the same process as a result you can execute the nasty specter code uh, for the speculation right uh, speculative execution and retrieve the password and here's the video let's watch it together so the video doesn't have any audio but you can see that they are going to tumblr.com trying to log in automatically populated the password and here's they were gonna go into the other website where it says spooktest.tumblr.com and there you go behold uh, chrome actually uh, put both sites in the same location the same process and as a result you have your spooky javascript code that executes and uh, as a result after a few time because the specter takes a lot of time to execute obviously but there you go they leaked the password they got the password and then they showed that how the, you can actually use that password to log in to the tumblr website to you to the to the actual attack to the actual victim tumblr nasty stuff guys definitely nasty stuff and uh finally so so yeah that's that's partly what spook uh, js is it's it's uh it's bypassing the site uh, isolation with this trick right it's like okay you got you chrome you you guys didn't really put enough isolation when it comes to subdomain your decision to only isolate top level domain was bad that's what they are saying another they discover not only that there is another discovery that those guys did where extensions believe it or not they run on the same process that is what shocked me to be honest so when you run extensions all these extensions for some reason run in the same process so if you install a shady extension that shady extension can read from a legitimate extension like LastPass, and they actually showed this video i'm gonna link it here i'm not gonna show it here but uh, i'm gonna link both videos of the article and the work those those guys book js did uh, to learn more but yeah it is scary stuff so the, the extension stuff really is not as dangerous because you have to actually install and people are wary of installing stuff uh which which is which is a good thing right people are getting more educated when it comes to these things but yeah uh the, the last pass the extension sharing the same process again that's a problem the isolation high isolation is always a good idea when it comes to these things all right guys to to kind of summarize what we learned today is uh, putting uh when you run a process you are allocated certain amount of memory right and uh, when you're building a browser you're visiting multiple websites and these websites if you use the same process then these website content cookies sensitive information username password all must live in memory obviously right so you're sharing multiple websites in the same process and that's a, effectively a red flag because now uh, an attacker website can live within the same context within the same process as a as a as a as, a, as an actual legitimate website and they it, for the longest time we really didn't af we weren't afraid because there's no way to read memory addresses in javascript until 2018 when spectre came into the picture which apparently it's very very hard to patch well, there are cpus all over the place that has this bug in it right not really bug. it's a feature the speculative execution actually speeds up the processing but also has this bug in it right uh, which which allows you to read stuff so chrome solution was to separate processes like okay every site gets its own process right until we found out that hey they didn't actually separate everything they only separate tip, top level domain so things that have subdomain such as uh, if you're going to 
tumblr.com and shady.tumblr.com they are running they're gonna run the same process chrome decided not to isolate those two because it's gonna be a little bit too much right tries to uh, 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 merge and do a low isolation in these kind of scenarios apparently google want to change even that to protect against that so chrome as a result of this high isolation having one website pair process overheads connections all of that stuff is only gonna get slower and slower and slower right <laughs> that's the problem and even when you when when you separate this it's it so yeah it, it is it is it is kind of sad that we're now chrome doesn't have a choice but to separate even a subdomain website into its own process so that means if so if you're going to your website like my website hosseinnasr.com and i have backend.hosseinnasr.com and i have courses.hosseinnasr.com and i have www.hosseinnasr.com there will be five six different processes and they are they're gonna be their own isolated processes and the saddest part is every these processes cannot even share the tcp connections although they are all going to the same ip address assuming right uh, in my case, I think all of them have the same IP address. Was saying also .com and blog and and all these things have the same IP address. And so you're establishing all these TCP connections, but HTTP effective to send all these requests, but you can't share them because they are in the different process. Right? It's just just it's not possible. As a result, Chrome will only consume more and more memory, and the memes will remain forever. Thank you so much for watching and if you're listening to the podcast thank you so much guys if you're watching the way youtube i have the same version on the podcast you can listen to this stuff on listen you can listen to the show in the podcast on spotify apple podcast and any of your favorite player just go to hosseinnasr.com slash podcast unfortunately that will spin up a new process goodbye